C, using cash profitability, we have the investment factor CMA, uh, that's obviously the factor which is in both models, and we have the UMD, uh, we have the momentum factor. Uh, so we stack them in the matrix, uh, we have here the first observation, and here we have return increase, returns for market factor, return for size factor, return for value factor, return for this factor, this factor, this factor, and this factor. Yeah. In the second row, we have the returns at time 2, here is the t, t is the time index. Again, here we have return entries in this matrix, given time t is 2, yeah, and so on and so forth. Yeah. Third row will be the returns for time 3, and so on. And finally, we end here with time capital T. Uh, and capital T is 336. So in the paper, they use 636 observations. Here, yeah, everywhere. Return entries. Okay, put these dots here. They denote return entries uh, for each of these factors. So we have a data matrix that has a dimension t, which is three, uh, 636 times 7. Okay? We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 entries or uh, column vectors. So it's a 600, we have 636 rows and 7 columns. Okay? Or we can write a t by n. And the sum of Bruce factors T is the time dimension. So this is a matrix. So we can, if we now, you know, if we would now, um, we can, if we would like to compare the maximum square sharp ratio for a model that uses the, let's say, market factor, size factor, HML, RM. Uh, WO using the operating profitability and the investment factor, then you then you would basically take the average, you know, the sample average of uh, the market uh, across T from T is uh, one to capital T from the market factor. Yeah, we would also take the sample average here for the size factor, sample average for the value factor, same for this risk factor and for this guy here. Okay? So we use would compound the sample averages and what what we would give what we would get then basically using the sample averages we can um, use uh, make use of the sharp ratio. You you might know the, the sharp ratio SR of this portfolio is basically maximum of RP, which is our portfolio. Our portfolio consists of one, two, three, four, five different uh, assets minus the risk free rate. But in our case, because we have zero cost strategies here, the risk free rate cancels out. Okay, so divided by sigma. P, which is the portfolio variance, yeah? So you would compound, you would use these inputs from this matrix and you can com easily compound the sharp ratio using this formula. What you end up with is the actual sharp ratio. And you can square this guy, then you have the maximum squared sharp ratio. Okay? So, but in sample simulation, or, uh, sorry, Full sample simulation, how does this work out? So, what you do is, having this matrix, you can construct a new matrix, okay? Yeah, you have, we have the same, Inputs here, okay. We 
We have the market factor, like above. Second is the size factor, SMV. We have the, the value factor here in our third column. Then we have the RMWO as operating profitability factor. We have the RMWC as the cash profitability factor. We have the CMA, which is the investment factor. And we have UMD for the momentum factor. Here we have our time index. So what we do is, we draw randomly with replacement using a probability probability 1 over t yeah. So we have one, three, 636 observations so we draw with probability 1 over 636 yeah. 1 over 636 randomly one of these rows. Let's say in the first draw we randomly draw I don't know, cut and three. We take the whole rows here, all rows, yeah. third row, all factors that are in, in, in this row, and put them here. So this three becomes then our first observation in this new data matrix. Okay? We put here then the data. The corresponding data from that row you find here. So again, then we put it back. Next, next time we again same procedure with probability one over six hundred thirty-six. We randomly draw one of these six hundred thirty-six rows and put it here. Let's say the next row is three hundred. I don't know three hundred fifty from from this matrix here. It becomes our second row in this new matrix. Yeah. We can write maybe here, this is the previous row 3, this is the previous row 350, yeah, this is new time observation 2 in our new matrix. And again, we put this row back and do the same thing again, until we have completed our 636. 636 rows yeah and I know the last row that we might have drawn is maybe the, the first one that we have here who knows so it's a completely random procedure and this is our full sample this is called full sample full sample estimation and they abbreviated in the paper FS full sample so we have now a new data matrix that has the same size as the original data matrix. This data matrix has a size of 636 by 7. Yeah, same size. So we again, again, if we want to estimate the sharp ratio for a model that has the market factor, size factor, value factor, RWO, the operating profitability, and let's say this model here, so this model should include this risk factors, we do the same thing again. So we take the sample average of, of, of this matrix of the first column, second column, third column, fourth column, and uh, this column, the sixth column, and we run the Sharpe ratio and get a new estimate for this sample run, for this new data matrix. Yeah, and they do the same thing. 100,000 times. So they always use the same original matrix, draw randomly yeah, 636 new uh, rows with, with replacement from the original matrix, compound the sharp ratios 100,000 times for each new data matrix. Yeah. And what you get, let's take this away now, now because now you have understood it. So what you get is basically uh, uh, 
a vector that has 100,000 it's 100,000 by one vector yeah, 100,000 by one, and that's the dimension and here are the entries so you get here basically sharp ratios for one, two, three, four, and so on, and so on, and so on, until 100,000. So what you can do is, you can then uh, sort the sharp ratios from in an increasing order, from highest to lowest, or vice versa, and then observation 50,000 gives the median sharp ratio yeah, of the full sample estimation. If you take the average of this 100,000 sharp ratios from the simulation study, you will get the average sharp ratio of the full sample simulation. This can be easily done in any program, even in Excel, so it's very simple. What you can also do is, so because if you have the sharp ratio, let's say this is the sharp ratio of the first model, and let's say the first model is a model that includes, I don't know, let's say the market factor, uh, size factor SMB, HML, we have RMWO and CMA. Okay? Let's say we have, if you, we estimate also the sharp ratio for each simulation, you also estimate the sharp ratio for uh, model, sharp ratio for model B. Uh, in model B, we have maybe, let's say, the market factor, MKT, size factor, SMB, value factor, HML, the profitability factor, RMW, using cash profitability, so RMWC and CMA, which is the uh, investment sector. And we do the same thing for each of these 100,000, because we have the data matrix, okay? So for each huge data matrix, we just grab the corresponding columns, yeah? and we can then also easily um, compound the sharp ratio in each run, of each of these 100,000 runs, for the model B, okay? So we get a vector, that has the dimension uh, 100,000 by 1, okay? That has the same dimension, of course, like this on our vector. So what we can then do is, we can also, we can store in a matrix the sharp ratios, sharp ratio of model B, yeah? And we can store sharp ratio, sharp ratio of model A. Yeah? Let's say in the first run, in run number one, sharp ratio of model A is maybe I don't know, let's say 0.5. Sharp ratio of model B is 0.4. In the second run, sharp ratio of model A is 0.6, of model B is 0.5, and so on. In the run 100,000 here, it could be that the sharp ratio of model A is maybe 0.9 and of model B is maybe 1.0. So, what that means is, for each of the simulation runs, we can store, we can determine the sharp ratios of different models and we can also make a, a, a statement of which model produced the higher sharp ratio. Okay, so for instance, if whenever model B has a higher sharp ratio of model A, we can have here uh, a 1 and otherwise a 0, or vice versa. By this we can count the number of times where one model outperformed the other. So that's very easy to do in programs such as MATLAB or maybe even in Excel, um, and this is also uh, what they do in their paper basically in order to compare how often actually the one model beats the other given each simulation run. So, 
This is what they call the, the full sample simulation. But they also use the in-sample and out-of-sample simulations. Why do they do that? So the reason why they do that is because this in-sample simulation is biased. Okay? And uh, that's why they suggest or they propose the in-sample and out-of-sample simulation. How does this work out? Let's take this away. So again, now we're talking about IS, which is in-sample, and OS, which means out-of-sample simulation runs. Let's just use, for simplicity, the market factor, MKT, um, RM, W O operating profitability and R M W C for cash profit profitability. Okay. So we have again we have our full sample here, and we know already we have uh, this here here the time.